from enter a fox. Christmas morning, 1 a.m. Just back from midnight mass. For the first time, I found myself loathing the communion service. Sanctimonious paganism is what it seemed to be. Something furtive and nasty running through it. <laughs> and before that, the business of clasping hands with other members of the congregation. <laughs> People one has no reason for touching. <laughs> no desire to touch, and yet one can't refuse an extended hand. Especially if it's an ethnic. <laughs> which I suppose that this one was from the nice firm grasp full of goodwill and the eyes brimming with gladness and sharing <laughs> I wonder what my grasp felt like to him soft Nasty grass. <laughs> Full of ill will, I expect. <laughs> and as for my eyes, there was an emotional wreck of a woman standing by the door where she'd been handing out the order of service sheets and candles that we had to light and hold. Why? <laughs> I don't want to know. <laughs> she was about 50, in loose baggy trousers, a short anorak, and spangled slippers. Her face was swollen and heavily made up, her hair scraggy. During the service, she led in the hymns and the responses, always getting in a beat earlier than everyone else, <laughs> arms folded head up to show she didn't need to consult the sheet in her. <laughs> when we got to the flesh pressing bit, she stuffed herself into the arms of various women, tears running down her cheeks. Then, when the vicar, an enormous young man with a moonish face and large spectacles, got to the blessing, she chattered away, nearly drowning him out. I thought at first it was to herself, but there was an awkwardly attentive younger woman standing near, so I suppose it must have been to her. At the end of the service, the vicar advanced with heavy, apprehensive tread to the door to wish happy Christmas to the departing congregation, visibly bracing himself as she heaved herself at him, wrapped her arms around him, like a wrestler. <laughs> he let her tuck in for a bit. <laughs> Extricated himself with an experienced kiss and caress. Got to the door. Threw it to the pavement. Leaving the field inside to her. She lunged about, embracing here, embracing there. I suppose her victims were known to her, but we did a large loop around her just <laughs> Made it safely out onto the pavement and a comparatively sane handshake with the vicar, who I suppose can't be held responsible for the psychological makeup of his parishioners. <laughs> though it can for the imbecility of his sermon. <laughs> Shot through with a weird gynecological imagery. <laughs> Asking us to allow the baby Jesus to be born inside us. <laughs> services before, <laughs> for the usual reasons I expect, 
I think of my parents, my mother, gaunt with cancer and dying during her last Christmas, insisting on going to church on Christmas morning. Rightly so. The pain would have been the pain wherever she was. So why not be there where she'd always been on Christmas morning? Her husband and two of her sons beside her and her memories of other Christmases with her parents. So the generations keeping in touch, the living and the dying with the dead. But none of that happened for me tonight. Just that woman, <coughs> so desolate and greedy. The communion with its symbolic cannibalism, <laughs> the great white disc of pseudo bread, the cheap and shiny chalice and goblets. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> I shall never enter a church again, except to look at the architecture and read the memorial plaques, but never for a service, except in a coffin, of course. 